right. Welcome everybody to the May 10th <laughs> meeting of the Penfield Planning Board, our pre-hearing work session. You're watching cable channel, what is it? 1303? <laughs> yes. Make sure you stay on this wonderful channel. Allison, would you like to uh, call the roll, please? <laughs> Mr. Hetsky? Here. Knauer? Here. Tidings? Here. Burton? Here. Nursinger? Here. Sangster? Here. O'Connor? Here. Weiser? Here. You start All saying right, live yeah. in five, I'm just going <laughs> to die laughing one day. Wait till we get our bumper band. <laughs> All right, uh, minutes. Yes, yeah. minutes were provided from April 12th and April 26th. I hope everyone had a chance to look at them. Uh, sorry they came in a little late, but hope everyone had a chance to take a look. Um, if there's any questions, comments, corrections, let us so know. If we could do the April 12th minutes first. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, Hetsky. Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. All right, April 26th. Anything? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Second by Burton. Thank you. Hetsky? Uh, I'll abstain. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. Great. All right. Zachary? Oh, I even got the formal Zachary. Is it Zachary? It is. Oh. It is. <laughs> I usually don't hear it here, though. <laughs> so, when you're, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> I, guess I, am. <clears throat> I guess we'll do the table items then. <laughs> yes, you will. If, I, if you're ready. Yes, you will. So, we have three table items. Um, however, our conversation tonight will be very brief. Um, the first uh, application that's table for baby landing, no action is required yet tonight. But for the public that's watching, um, I just wanted to inform everyone that on May 16th, next Wednesday, the town board will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. Uh, for the applicant's request to rezone a portion of lands from R120 to LaSalle's Landing District. It's approximately 5.8 acres of land that would be rezoned um, as part of the project uh, in the, uh, another phase that they're looking at for what's proposed as apartment units down there. So the public hearing will take place next week. Other than that, there are no other updates. So it's next Wednesday at 7? 7? 7 p.m. in the auditorium here at Town Hall. All right. Other than that, no action is required by this board. And going live via channel 1303. You heard it. So you can get all your Penfield information. So true. Moving on. Okay. All right. Moving on. Second table application, 2316 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road for the uh, law office that's proposed. Um, the applicant sent a message to staff earlier this week requesting the board table the application as they are still reviewing uh, elements of the project uh, before providing those updates that have been requested. Um, no new updates, no new information has become available since it was tabled at our last meeting. Um, <coughs> so unless there are any, any questions from the board at this time, um, we would just Entertain ask. Entertain a table or a motion table? Motion table? Yes. So moved. Got a second? I'll second. Okay. Yeah, they need, I, I understand they need an opportunity to think Review. this through because there were a, a number of changes and requests for additional information. Certainly. Um, that mm -hmm. came in a short amount of time. All right. Okay. Uh, Hetsky? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. And the third one for Wilbert's um, expansion for vehicle storage on the property, they have continued to ask for no action taken by the board as they're reviewing uh, some of the history with the zoning board right now um, before they move forward. So again, no action is required tonight. And that concludes our table items. We have a couple action items this evening. The first one is for 1677 Penfield Road. What timing you have, Spencer? What timing? Uh, for, Pen in the hallway. <laughs> for Penfield Storage, uh, they're back with a minor building modification request. Uh, as they were putting the building plans together, it was discovered that the height of the building was not tall enough for the elevator shaft of the three-story building. 
that was approved as part of the site plan. The building mod and on their letter of intent, the net increase of a portion of the building would be uh, three feet seven and a half inches, bringing it to a total of 37 feet seven and a half inches, still below what is uh, required by code. The code maxes allowed out. Allowed by code. Yes, allowed by code. Sorry about that. Um, so the height of the building is still compliant, and I just wanted to show some of the elevations because uh, they are adjusting a portion of the building to accommodate the elevator shaft. As you can see from yep from the view there, there's a couple images. The left side of the building, um, that's the portion they're going to raise up to accommodate for it. They've kind of evened it out. So is based that on the east end of the building? The southeast corner because the way it all faces. Okay. Um, if you can put the rendering <coughs> that they provided as well. So kind of from a ground view, that's what the building would look like with the adjustments. Right, and behind that is Home Depot. Correct. Behind the site yes. is Home Depot. Yeah, you're correct. That's from the state. state. Okay. Anybody have any are you done? Mm, yes. You want to keep talking? No, I don't. Okay. No any objections? No. I have no issues. Does somebody want to move to approve that so change? Good. Second. Burton and Tidings. Petsky? Aye. Burton? Aye. Mauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. Okay. We'll be in touch, man. Thank you very much. Have a good night. The last item as an action item is for the previously approved office building at 1600 Penfield Road. Their one year expiration date for site plan approval is, com is coming up this month. Uh, they've submitted a letter to the board requesting a one year extension to the approval. Uh, the board approved it on May 25th, 2017. This site has been granted previous extensions to its former project um, in the past by this board. Um, so if there's going to be any yep. dialogue, I need to recuse myself. I need to rewind that. Thank you. So recused. <laughs> Second. Yeah. So when, I'm when staring was, at it, too. <laughs> when was the original <clears throat> approval? For this office this building, one, 2017, about a year ago. Oh, yeah. May 20, May 25th. Okay. I, I, I don't have a problem. Yeah, I, I would say we should go ahead and do that. Do you, one of you guys want to move it? Yeah, I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay. Hetsky. Aye. Mauer. Aye. Tidings. Aye. Okay. Anything else before our hearing? I'm done talking. Okay. We will recess and reconvene at 7 o'clock up on the dais for the public hearing portion of the meeting. Too bad we don't have a band to play music in between. <laughs> We're working they do our with people. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the May 10th meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming. We have two items on our agenda tonight. We have a sketch plan and a preliminary and final uh, after that. The sketch plan, uh, for those of you who do not know the terminology that we use here in Penfield, the sketch plan is a an informal application or idea for a project that an applicant has. As such, a lot of the specific details have not been completed. Uh, it is an opportunity for that applicant to share their idea with the planning board and with the public so that we can get some feedback and, and offer feedback to them uh, regarding the proposed project. The way our process works is the applicant will present their uh, proposed idea. 
the planning board will ask questions then we open it up for the audience to come on up and ask questions if uh, if you want to uh, make a comment raise your hand I'll call you up please come up to the podium state your name and address for the record and address your comments to the board not to the applicant all right everybody understand that and please uh, turn off cell phones and vibrators and pagers and stuff like that and uh, Zach read the first item thank you mr. chairman application number one Marquez and Associates PC 930 East Avenue suite 1000 Rochester New York 14607 on behalf of Richard Smith request an informal discussion before the board with plans for a four lot subdivision to develop four single-family residences with associated site improvements on a total of 4.3 acres at 280 Panorama Trail. The property is now formally owned by Richard Smith and zoned R120. Application number 18P-0019, SBL number 123.16-1-22. Go ahead, Larry. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I'm Larry Heininger, uh, Vice President of Engineering for Marcus and Associates. Uh, this is our 30th year and my 40th year in engineering. Grew up in Penfield. With me, Richard Smith on the left, the owner of the property, who is a forester. And on the right, Jim Liebel, who is a craftsman carpenter. Um, appreciate the board um, hearing this and willing to ask, answer any questions that come up. All right. so. I think Rich bought the property a few years back, originally was thinking of building his own house down in the Dell, realized that building a road down there for one house was going to be uh, very expensive, and um, it had m numerous conversations with Mark Valentine and Jim Costello, and they said, you need an engineer. So they located me, and we originally came in a few months ago to DRC with uh, five lots on a town dedicated road with cul-de-sac all over the 20,000 square foot requirement. The, uh, the guidance from the DRC was, um, we think that the five lots is a little aggressive, but more importantly, the town maximum road slope is 8%, private drive is 10%, we have approximately 400 feet of road at 2% per 100, that's an eight-foot difference in getting down to the valley floor. So the cul-de-sac is sitting on terra firma. Now, under a dedicated scenario, it would have been eight feet of fill. Um, and uh, in one hand, you avoid the expense of concrete gutters. On the other hand, people theoretically all love concrete gutters, but I think on a private drive, like Panorama Trail, um, Again, growing up in Penfield, I'm familiar with the Rainses, the Volkers, the Ballasteers, all the private drives up in this neck of the woods. Um, we don't think there'll be any problem selling three lots and Rich building his house there. So we came back with the four lots on four plus acres. And um, our minimum lot is uh, 41,383, well over the 25,000 square foot requirement. Um, the road will be the standard town road section per the detail. Instead of being 12 feet wide min per your town code, it'll be 16 with two foot stone shoulders both sides, so a total of 20. Uh, water will be the Monroe County Water Authority with a hydrant down at the cul-de-sac. And the sewer will be uh, E1 grinder pumps every homeowner will have a grinder pump pumping out to a check valve and then tying into a um, dedicated force main that's probably about an inch and a half diameter and mark has indicated that this has been done elsewhere in the town so this is not new territory so that covers the road the water the sewer the next two and this comes from ralph peak way back when the big five drainage and traffic so we've done a uh, a swip and the uh, indicated to Mark that um, in that SWIP, there's basically no flow coming in here or here in a 10 year. Larry, do you mind picking up yep, the handheld? In a 10 year event, this is 0 
six point zero six six one hundredths of a cubic foot per second, so pretty negligible. And um, the other one is one point nine coming in from the ravine. And I trace this back up. There's a 12-inch RCP reinforced concrete pipe under Clark that runs through the ravine between behind Huntington. So our sizing of an 18-inch culvert under this person's driveway, which was a thumb in the air at the time and a quick calculation that will that'll hold up just fine, even for the 100-year flow. Um, and traffic, if you want. I can give you the number, but it's 0.75 vehicles per hour for a single lot, single family home. So three cars per hour. I don't think it'll be that much, and that's peak hour, seven to nine in the morning, because these are targeted at people like myself, uh, baby boomers that don't want a big house, don't want a big lawn, and want a first floor um, bedroom and stop going on stairs. We received uh, the comments, and I responded to all those in writing. I can read through them if you want. All right. And so at that point, any questions from the board? Yeah, I have a couple of questions, Larry. The, the first one is, how do you propose to maintain that better? How do you propose to maintain the stone shoulders on the driveway coming down over the life of the drive? Um, well, there are, there are typical shoulder details. Your, your town roads, something like Gloria Drive, would have a stone shoulder. So that's what we would do. But we could also put it in 18 feet wide, hard asphalt. The thing is, you are going to get a transition from asphalt to lawn. Right. So, you know, just from the standpoint of, you know, having uh, difficult weather conditions and, and uh, uh, difficult. Um, freezing conditions and possibly needing uh, an emergency responder up mm. there. Um, you get the outriggers on a, on a large fire truck, um, you know, a few years after this is built with a stone shoulders and a, and a steep condition. And I'm just you wondering know, if you've considered, you know, some type of protection for the stone shoulder or even protection I, for the paved I think what edge. we would do, I mean, again, I looked at your, your, your section and code for the driveway. The minimum width is 12. To me, that's inadequate. Okay, if you have 16, that's two eight-foot lanes, and you've got a shoulder. So if you've, your tires are running on number 1A gravel, you know it. If it makes more sense to go um, to nine-foot wide hard surface lanes, right to grass, we could do that. So. What's on the drawing right now is 20 feet of hard surface. Okay. Which which state law requires anyhow. Right, and then down here, on this rendering, I have decreased the size of the center island. I have it's the standard outside radius of a town cul-de-sac, the 40-foot radius, and the in a wheelbase 30 vehicle has a 42-foot radius, so you're good by three. And the sweep area of a wheelbase 30 is 13.6 feet. So I have now increased this to basically being a one-way counterclockwise 20-foot wide lane, which is where those, that's where the outriggers are going to be, which is why we want to get down. We're starting to run flat in this area. So up, up in here, we're at the 10 percent slope, which is the town, the town max. Down in here, we dropped to a 5% slope and a 3% across the cul-de-sac. And you saw the fire marshal's note about wanting that entire cul-de-sac paved? Uh, I saw the note, but I'm questioning it. If you have a detail from 2013 with the Grass Island and the DEC stormwater regs encourage green infrastructure, why does that comment pop up? Or do you have a town-wide initiative to eliminate your islands? Because I know other towns that are excavating out asphalt and putting in islands to reduce the imperviousness in the overall town. I can speak to that, Larry. Uh, we are trying to avoid landscaped islands wherever possible, especially on dedicated roads. Obviously, this is private. Um, the fire marshal did express his concern 
just regarding the turning radius and accessibility for large emergency vehicles just makes it easier to navigate when the whole surface is paved. Okay. And as I said to Jim and Rich, if they really, really, really want it paved, we'll pave it. Now, any of you familiar with Randall Arndt's work? Rural by Design, some of the, the planning books? Well, the village of Honey Falls made it into his book because they have a cul-de-sac with a 90-foot radius, I believe, 180 feet all around. So if you want it paved, it's similar to your other detail, we can do that. We'll, we'll, move, we'll move the water garden that's here right now in the SWIP to another place. There's water gardens here, plus the fifth is there. We'll pave it. So those are really town staff comments with respect to maintenance of... You know, if, if you really are <laughs> eliminating so your center islands and you found it to be an issue with fighting fires, it's not a problem. We'll do it. So my next question is, how do you feel about uh, staff's comment with respect to turning this now into a three-lot subdivision? Uh, I don't agree. And I addressed it in my letter. We, we haven't seen your letter. Larry, can you describe for us uh, in layman's terms how uh, the proposed roadway would be constructed? Um, yes, I will. What do you want me to do? You want me to talk about the lot first or the roadway construction? We're on the lot four oh, issue. Uh, well, while he's uh, reading that, if you could move on to... Well, the roadway is going to have to be done. Um, but I discussed with Rich, it's probably going to need a winch cat to get a, a track machine down the slope. Once the track machine is down the slope, then you can excavate the pond, which is in the dry, to start moving material up onto the slope. Um, we'll be so you're excavating a pond using the fill the in situ the soil, from soil. There to create a right, and that pond is not on the stream. That pond is in the dry. It will fill up after we're done. So that is going to generate a certain amount of material, which can be calculated. Then Rich has already um, been sourcing other sources of material that would be suitable for road embankment. They would have to be brought in, dumped, filled, compacted. <laughs> six inch lifts. The other thing that I'll look at is similar to, I'll call it Penfield Road, that old Penfield Road where they've got the ready stone and then they've got a one-on-one -on -one slope above that of whether or not we would be better served more economically of doing a ready stone and then a terracing which is reduces your amount of fill. I've engineered things like that before both gravity systems and with Tyvek's. So, does that answer the question? I mean, it's going to be a, a uh, kind of a, a slow to, process. We can't. To, to a degree. Um, I guess I, for one, um, guess I'm imagining a bunch of large dump trucks parked per perpendicular to Panorama Trail, halfway across Panorama Trail, dumping uh, soil. Initially, that might be the case once we get an embankment in, then they'll, they'll be taking the material down and dumping. It depends how much material we can generate in the site. Mm -hmm. They can then be worked up the slope by a dozer. Okay. Um, on the, uh, the question of lot four, the first question was that the slope was steep. It's um, five feet and 40 or seven degrees that's an inherently stable slope. The slope stability of this material is probably up around 30 degrees. The rear setback is 30 feet. Currently, we're showing a 50-foot setback. I've used extremely built, generous building pads, 40 by 60, 
which is 2,400 square feet. These homes are targeted to be about 1,800 square, and the footprints might be 48 by 36, which is 1,728. I like to use a larger pad because I've seen where people use pads that are smaller than the homes, and the grading does not been designed to accommodate it, and it just creates trouble. So currently the lot width at the setback is 120 feet, 100 is code, and the distance between the two swales at setback is 140 feet. So the front corners of the building pad are 30 feet from the northern swale and 35 from the northeastern swale. I talked about that with Mark Valentine a few months ago that I was intentionally holding that type of separation <clears throat> because if for some reason I wanted to do a one on three slope, I could bring the pad uh, 10 feet above the stream uh, elevation. And I could also use some landscaping type retaining walls. And again, this is, this is generic. This is not a specific uh, lot to lot based on a building pad. I just actually completed one in Greece for a very specific 2200 square foot house backing up to a stream. Okay, so now we get kind of cool and technical. The elevation of the northern swale perpendicular to the front corner of the pad is approximately 311.7, and that's feet above sea level, uh, with a pad elevation of 319, finished floor 15 inches higher, 320.25, and a basement 12 courses at 311.25, we don't anticipate a problem. So I'm telling you, okay, yeah, the basement is 0.45 or 5 and 3 eighths inch below the stream at that point. The flow from the northern channel in a 10-year event is 0 0.06 hundredths of a cubic foot per second, and a 10-year event is 3.66. That's like a 12-inch pipe in a 100-year event. With a channel gradient of 5 to 6.6 .6 in this reach, so the channel is flowing down 5, 6%, the propensity of water to go horizontally subsurface through a soil media with only a 0.45 foot of uh, differential, um, think of water like electricity. I'm giving one a huge pipeline to move that way, and I'm giving the other one basically insulation to go that way. Don't see any issue with the, um, the water on the basement wall. And the other thing is we're probably going to adjust the cul-de-sac a little bit, adjust the grade, adjust the pad. And we also what I pointed out to Mark is when we do the uh, footer drains, all of these pads will drain by gravity. There won't be any need for electrical powered sump pumps. This is going to the pond will be down at elevation uh, about 299. And my lowest floor Finished floor is about 14, so this basement's going to be about 05, so six foot higher than the pond. And then on the, um, on the other swale, the elevation is actually lower. It's 308.7 at the front corner, 311 at the back, and it's 60 feet away, and the channel gradient is 3.3 to 5%, and the flows are 1.9 to 12.7. So the 18-inch culvert is going to flow about 24% full in a 10-year event, and um, it's going to be probably about 85%, you know, at a 100-year event. You probably know this, but normally you design uh, storm drainage for town roads at a 10-year storm, county roads at a 25-year storm, and then state highways, maybe a 50-year storm. So I've got a driveway culvert that's designed for 100-year flow. I guess it all comes back to when I laid this out, I looked very carefully at whether or not this was a buildable lot, and it's a very buildable lot in my opinion. Otherwise, it wouldn't be on the drawing and it wouldn't have my seal on it. So notwithstanding the the comments um, from staff on your responses. Um, should the board be willing to consider this four lot subdivision favorably? Would the applicant be willing to uh, limit 
the pad size that you're describing, including the footprint of the garages? You just, tell us. You're just asking a question. Well, you, you, you're you using some <coughs> statistical data about the size of the footprint of these foundations, um, uh, which I assume did not include the garages. So I'm, I'm just asking the question uh, to, to clarify what it is we're asking, we're being asked to. In, in to my approve. selfish best interest, I'm going to say yes. Because I can't stand it when I ask a builder, what kind of house are you going to build? And it's not going to be any, oh, it won't be any deeper than 48 feet. And next thing you know, he builds something 56 feet back. Well, on, the, on this site, that might be a problem. Right, it absolutely would be a problem. And um, I don't like it. And it, it puts me in a very difficult situation. So the simple answer is yes, we can work with some pad sizes that include the garage, because these are probably going to be, I'll say, Cape Cods or smaller ranches. That way with a cape, you get your first floor bedroom, you get two bedrooms up top. Kids come to visit, grandkids visit, but you're not doing stairs every day. Okay, that's all I have, AJ. Um, <clears throat> I had one question, Larry. Could you, could you describe to what degree the, uh, just as in general, um, to what degree the fills and cuts are on the parcel? Simple answer right now, no. Rich has asked me the same thing. Let's get to this meeting, let's find out the answer, then we will do a surface of the existing, a surface of the proposed, do the sections, know how much fill is needed to create the section, do the negative side of how much fill can be created and then we'll have a number for you. Okay, thank you. And that's why I said, you know, would I be better? Here's what you should know. We have, I, I looked at this as a 50 foot right away. Old, you know, kind of old school. Not a 60 foot standard, but a 50, not 49.5, not three rods, but a 50 foot private right away. And we are 2% on the road, one on three, town standard, out to that 50 foot right away. And then, as Mark said, we do allow a two-on-one to reduce the fill, which is a 25-degree slope, and it is, is stable. So legally, an attorney, we have a few, will write up, we'll give him that description of the road in the cul-de-sac, and all four owners are going to have access to get there. Um, that's where, now once I get to the edge of that 50 feet, what is the most efficient way to get down to the valley floor? Is it to go out on a two-on-one, or is it to use the ready stone and do some, some tiered retaining walls? In which case, then, we would put guardrails up so that someone doesn't drive off. And if they drive off down a two-on-one, I think they'll be OK if they go bumpity-bumpity-bump down a terrace of ready stone. Probably not such a hot thing. But there are. And that really doesn't matter. There are more dangerous situations in this town and other towns than what's on this drawing. And I don't consider this dangerous, or I wouldn't have my seal on it. So we will get to the answer, because we need to know the answer. OK, thank you. OK, uh, we will open it up to the audience. Uh, would anyone like to comment on this sketch plan? Good evening. My name is Ted Nixon. I live at 326 Panorama Trail with my wife, Kathy, who would be here tonight except she had uh, cataract surgery earlier in the day, so she's out of commission for today. So she sent me off with her instructions, and her instructions she'll have were... clear vision in a couple days. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Maybe she should have been here. Um, she sent me with her instructions, and that is to explain. We live at 326 which is right up here, okay? We border on 
the gully. Um, and so we get a chance from time to time to take walks down there and to see it firsthand. But the one thing that struck me immediately when we bought the house 10 years ago was how far down it goes relatively quickly. It's really a steep drop. Now we are at the top of our private drive, but it's still a, a steep drop. Um, and the other thing that struck me very much about it, which hasn't been talked about tonight, is there is an incredible diversity of um, animals, plants. Uh, it is really an interesting uh, uh, landscape down there. Um, we get visited <laughs> regularly by some of the animals that live down there, uh, included but not limited to um, turkeys, deer, coyotes. Uh, we had a raccoon on our bird feeder tonight. Um, but there is just, it's, it's quite uh, a wonderful uh, uh, combination of, of living uh, beings. And of course, with the, with the water down there and the plants, I mean, you know, when this was first, you know, flown, uh, the idea of, of trying to um, uh, build, this, build something down there was really shocking to me because of the uh, environmental impact that it would have. So I'm just passing along my concerns in that. And I'm not an engineer. I don't know how far, you know, how wide things need to be. I know that uh, we have trouble in the winter getting up our driveway. That's why we both had to get uh, four-wheel drive vehicles. And the drive up our driveway is a whole lot less steep than the drive down there. But um, that's not what I came to say. What I came to say is this is a very, I think, precious combination of life down there. And I think you ought to consider that before you decide you're going to go in there with bulldozers and, and develop it. Thank you. Anyone else from the audience uh, like to comment on this? Yeah, come on up. Good evening. My name is Lydia Slusarek. Me and my husband, we live at 270 Panorama Trail. We have lived there for 38 years. Our property borders the plan in this area. I'd like to make two key comments that we see every year. One, there is not a single year there hasn't been a single year in 38 years that we have not experienced terrible erosion of the ground around our property. Our driveway has yielded. Uh, posts that have been built along the driveway now are leaning almost like ready to fall down and constantly we have to fill or repair the back of our house in order to ensure that we don't have any major structural problems. Second, um, again, there has not been a single year where we have not seen many trees falling down. And we have been extremely lucky that the tree has not damaged our house yet, even though we have trees that were like from here to where you're sitting, falling down. So the ground is very fragile. Obviously, in addition, we have wonderful animals that visit all the time. We have, uh, we had trillium, which is Penfield flower, that uh, grows in the area. And although the house is very, very nice because it has a nice uh, private area behind it, it's a continuous problem. The ground is extremely um, porous and prone to uh, sliding down the ravine. Thank you. And by the way, I'm an engineer. <laughs> Anyone else from the audience like to, yes, ma'am, come on up.
Kathy Heinig. I live at 15 Hickory Lane. Uh, this is my backyard down in the ravine. Um, so I'm certainly going to follow up with the beautiful vegetation and animals that are there. I think one of my concerns that I have noticed in the 14 years that we have we moved to Penfield uh, because we liked what open land there was, I, I now on my way to the Y in the morning see what has happened on Creek so that hundreds of beautiful trees have been taken down. Any place we go, we're, we seem to be destroying some of the land in Penfield by building instead of having it be a bit of a rural area. If you didn't want to move out to the country, you could come to Penfield. But I'm very concerned about what's down there. It gets quite wet. <laughs> I'm sure they're planning to do something about that by filling. But I think it's a concern, and I think traffic will be a concern. The school bus stops along there, and it will be, there's a lot of traffic that goes in and out. I notice you have a, uh, a uh, speed timer up there now by that area, and uh, usually the traffic is going 45 <laughs> miles an hour, not 35. And I think it's what I just think it's a disadvantage to see this happening to beautiful land. I don't think it's necessary. And why you would want to build down in a hole, I'm not sure that I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, Richard Horowitz living at 300 Panorama Trail. Our property is adjacent to the subject site that is about to be, uh, that is being reviewed. Um, one item that I think is of um, particular concern to me and I think should be, of course, to the town is the safety of vehicular uh, travelers along Panorama Trail. Uh, Panorama Trail, as you are well aware, is a uh, very strongly used um, road artery in the town. The prospect, the safety prospect of people coming up the, uh, this private drive or proposed dedicated drive is of concern, I think, um, regarding public safety. I also am concerned about the stability of Panorama Trail. Uh, right now, um, we have experienced a, I think, a storm catch basin that the bottom fell out and the pipe is gone right uh, close to the Slucerix Slu house. So I would be very concerned about the stability of uh, the intersection of a private drive to Panorama Trail and the safety. Uh, I'm not so sure what that landing area would be or how that would be designed uh, because in the winter with the ice and the snow it gets very precarious. I know from my own driveway that has a steep incline that we have to be extremely careful in those kind of weather conditions. So I, I just wanted to point out uh, those aspects of this development. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to comment on this? Going once, twice. Okay, anyone else from the board have any more comments? Larry, do you have any final comments or? Um, yeah, a couple things. A couple things I'll I'll address there and things I forgot. So. Um, we know it's, it's steep. We know there's slopes. We understand that there's diversity of wild turkey, deer. Didn't know about the coyotes. <coughs> Raccoons don't surprise me. Uh, with regards to the property to the north, Rich originally suggested that we bring the road in up here 
Um, I looked at that slope. You know, what you can see that I'm doing is I'm going down, I'm tucking into the bank, and I'm going down, and my toe slope ends obviously before the property line. When I did a similar analysis on this one side, it really didn't work. I also did notice the slope stability, and you can see how tight the contours are here. Um, and I also noticed the gazebo out here, right at the edge. Um, some of you may know I'm a former government official and was state coach certified. Uh, the gazebo is not a habitable structure. If it was, it would be in violation of state building code being too close to the top of a bank. It's right in your site planning first couple chapters of the code. <coughs> so as far as the pad's concerned, uh, this is right now dialed in to be uh, 20 feet at 2.5% before we drop. That could be adjusted. The other reason I wanted to stay to the south is because the town has had their issues with this storm sewer, and Jeff Benway went in and put in two sticks of 18 to bring it out. We were intending on going back to the original 24-inch, setting a manhole so the town could get to it, and then extending out of that manhole to wherever our, our slope ended. So what's here in dark green is undisturbed. What's here in light green is currently disturbed. We intend about the tree inventory. We'll set a survey gun up here, shoot down to the floor to pick up probably station 150 or two, and then do offsets so Rich knows where the edge of disturbance is so we can locate trees and tie them to known points, and then we can put it into a, a base of the trees that are there, what's dead, what's invasive, what's in good shape, what's eight inches or over. Um, the soils are ATF3, which is Arcport Dunkirk Colony, so it's basically colony silt loam in a very steep variant, uh, so it's sand. Um, so I'm, I'm familiar with the material. We're not doing anything steep like Mother Nature did, so I know the kind of slope that'll hold, but again, we're dealing with one on three, one on two slopes. As um, far as traffic, we did a site distance analysis. The tightest is this way, and we meet the New York State DOT guidelines for 35 miles an hour. Um, actually, <clears throat> anyone here is a at an ear with the county sheriff. I know you have a substation right up the road, but people come here around the bend and they're coming on an upgrade and they got their foot on the accelerator. There's a really good spot to shoot radar right there. So you just step out of the car and wave them over, write a ticket for doing more than 35. Um, and actually, I'm the engineer that called Mark about the catch basin that was the day that we were out there doing the site distance analysis, and I noticed that the catch basin in the gutter had dropped. And as a former town engineer, I said, this is not good. It's Friday at 1 o'clock. They need to know something about it. It's going to rain tomorrow, and this would be a real mess. So he thanked me. I can send you the email if you like. You can confirm with him that I'm the guy that alerted <coughs> your, your engineer and your DPW and uh, they put a sucker truck in there, pulled out about 20 feet, and dropped, I think, two sticks of, uh, Zach, do you know, 24-inch pipe they dropped in there down to the, and then poured a new concre concrete around the annular space and set a new uh, DI rim. I'm not sure of the size of the pipe, but I do know that they did the work for the repairs. Right. So that's kind of slick way how they did it. Cleaned it all out and dropped a couple sticks of high-density poly in there filled in the end of their space, and then built a new catch basin up at the top of the road. And that happened, I think, maybe two Fridays ago. Uh, 413, that was the day we did the analysis. And um, that's about it. Do you have any questions back at me? At the moment, no. OK, thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. And we will uh, move on to our next Agenda item.
Application number two, O'Neill Rodak Land Surveying Associates, PC, 5 South Fitzhugh Street, Rochester, New York, 14614, on behalf of James Catone, requests under Chapter 250, Article 11-11.2 .11 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary final subdivision approval to allow for a two-lot subdivision with associated site improvements on a 1.4-acre property located at 1761 Qualtro Road. Property is now formally owned by Mansell W. Gale Living Trust and Mansell Gale and zoned R120. Application number 18P-0020, SPL number 123.08-1-5. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is John Antitomaso. I'm here tonight on behalf of um, the owner, James Catone, who's in the crowd here. And also Peter Buckley is here as a consultant for us. Um, from what you just said, there's a, Mr. Catone actually owns the property. It is in his ownership. Uh, he owns the property located at 1761 Quadro Road in Penfield. We're here tonight to present the following project for the Planning Board's review. We are looking to subdivide the existing property at 1761 Quattro Road into two lots. Lot number one will contain the existing house and garage with 20,097 square feet or 0.461 acres to the right of way or 23,067 square feet or 0.530 acres to the center line. The lot two will contain a new single family home building lot with uh, 40,454 square feet or 0.929 acres to the right of way or 42,929 square feet or 0.986 acres to the center line. Um, we have completed all the necessary required forms for our presentation this evening and you also have a copy of the survey map uh, that was created by Scott Measley from O'Neill Rodeck Land Surveying Associates showing the two parcels as lot number one and lot number two. Um, the character of the land is flat, no water courses exist on the subject property. Single family residential is in harmony with the master plan and surrounding properties. The proposed action will run with current development regulation and specifications. Um, street layout and design is not applicable to our application. Um, street name, of course, is the existing address, Quattro Road. Arrangement of the lots is to create two lots and the property is shown in our survey map. Um, no drainage improvements are needed. Um, utility sidewalk and pedestrian access and conservation easements. The subject property has an existing sidewalk in place and the owner is willing to grant any required easements that the town may require for access to the sidewalk area. Um, no pedestrian easements or conservation easements exist. And parks, open spaces are not uh, applicable to our property. Um, density calculations are not applicable to our property. And um, special benefited districts are not applicable to our property. Um, On-site sewage disposal approval from Monroe County is addressed by the engineer. Documents required for dedication of the public improvements is addressed by the engineer as well. Um, we also received a response letter from Monroe County Department of Planning and Development um, stating that they have reviewed this application and they do not have any comment. We are working with the engineers to accommodate requests from the county in regards to showing existing or any proposed utilities on the plan. So we are, we are and will be working hand in hand with the engineer, town engineers in Monroe County to complete all necessary documents to create this two lot subdivision. And just wanted to thank you for your time and ask if you have any questions. Uh, John, the, the one comment about the <clears throat> exit door steps on the porch uh, to comply with the current zoning, what's the plan to I guess, remove or take that door out of commission? Um, I, you, yeah, we, we boarded it up uh, for now, but we will anticipate doing whatever we need to do to make sure that that is either repaired or replaced or whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, that was the only issue I saw, or I guess comment. Okay. Anybody else? So there any, any plans for the house right now, Jen? Uh, we're not, uh, Mr. Catone's not really sure what we're doing yet. We're, we're trying to get a plan ahead of, uh, 
try to get some focus and see what we're going to be doing between the two properties. So do you intend to, to build a house on speculation or is this intended to be a lot for a custom home? Um, it'll be a lot for a custom home. It's almost just shy of an acre, so we anticipate putting a custom home on the on the property, Jim. And could you show the board uh, on the map approximately where the pad would be? Where the the house pad would where be? Where the house pad would be? We anticipate it coming in here and probably into this area to the to the cuts of the property. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone in the audience? Uh, like to comment on this application? Can we just take a look at the plan? I haven't seen the plan. Sure, sure. Okay. Does anyone else have an actual comment? Come on up. You do. <laughs> you do. You'll be on TV. There's millions of people watching. You'll be a star. This is part of the. Sure. I'm sorry. Hi, I'm uh, Josie Kinsilla Spanafora, and I live um, right next to the property. And I know my husband isn't here, but the lot is pretty wooded and, um, and wet. And we were just wondering how much of that wooded property is going to be destroyed and cut away because you know we really kind of like that setting and um, just wondering how much you know on our property that was going to be and is there going to be a road that's going to you know how is that going to all work with the new home that was the questions that we had well it, w it would be potentially just a single family home so it'd be a driveway not a actual road with two-way okay. traffic um, I don't know if John, you want to answer more of our questions here. Um, yeah, we would in, we would anticipate just putting a driveway into the house, and we would of course love to leave as many trees as we possibly can because that's a better seller for us too when we put a custom home up. So we we'll take out trees that we need to build a pad and whatever other utilities we have to put in, and then we'll try to just leave everything else the way it would be. Okay. Come on up. <laughs> Whoever wins first. <laughs> uh, my name's Dave Uhazy. I'm here with my wife, Lori. We live at 26 Waterbury Lane, which backs up to a portion of the property. Um, if I understand correctly, they're planning to leave the existing home and garage and build a home somewhere if you're facing the property to the left of that existing home. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So I can attest that the back of that lot is extremely wet. It is a swamp. It is a wetland. Uh, our property over the last 25 years on Waterbury Lane has continued to become more wet as the years have developed, as I think all the people who kind of back up to the basin uh, would attest to. Uh, if I was looking at planning, which is not my job, uh, if you look at a Google map, the most logical plan for that lot would be to kind of finish off the original Mark IV development, tear down the existing structure, put two houses on Baird Road, and not have to deal with the extremely swampy, wet backyard of the lot that I guess they're looking to develop. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. I'm Jim Cruzy. I live at uh, 1767 Qualtro. It's the property to the uh, south. Um, it is very wet. I'm very concerned about any building and displacement of the water. Um, there is a drainage problem there um, and I don't want it to wind up in my basement. And even to put a driveway into the back of the property there's going to have to be quite a bit of fill. It's at least six foot below road grade. Uh, it could be eight. I haven't measured it but it is quite low. 
So any displacement of the water would be a very big concern of mine. So, and say that, <clears throat> excuse me, to say that there's no drainage problem um, is a underestimation. There is a severe drainage problem there. The water does stand there almost year round. So okay. very concerned about that. Thank you. Anyone else? Like to comment? Anyone else from the board? John, I just got one question. Wouldn't it be better to make the two lots like equal or no in this case? Um, we, we, we talked about that as well, but it, it's just we feel that with the existing structure and the date of the structure, if we re redo that house, it would be good enough with that size lot, and then we can actually put a, a nice custom home on the bigger lot is what our goal would be. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Come on up. Hi, I'm Lori Uhazy, 26 Waterbury Lane with David. Um, I just wanted to report that one of the homes that backs up to us on the loop, what is the name of the loop, North, North Croft Road or North Croft Loop, um, they, we of course were wet there, we're the lowest lying area, everything drains from the town of Penfield pretty much right through our yard and through the back of this property that you're speaking of. But uh, when one of the neighbors behind us on Northcroft uh, regraded their hill uh, from the original uh, grade, it caused additional water problems for us. So we became much wetter and have a lot more problems because they, uh, since they've regraded. So I'm concerned about any regrading of the property that we're discussing would, again, force additional water. Because once you take away all those trees and brush, uh, that helped to absorb a little bit of it. I think we end up with more water. Thank okay. you. Thank you. OK, anyone else? Does that land, uh, John, run off? Isn't there like a creek or something that runs back there where that land should all, the water should all rot, you know, run off um, I into it? I believe so. Well, I'm not positive. Yeah. So. Okay. Does the concrete basin, does the town concrete basin that runs behind that mm -hmm. property? It's spring fed from up on, off of uh, uh, Scribner. Okay. That is, that is a question. What is the plan for the water? Pete? Well, if you have comments, we got to come up. Okay. Just so it gets all on the microphones and on the record. And I, uh, my question is simple. What, what is the plan? Okay, if you don't mind introducing yourself. Well, uh, my name is Sue Bercuzzi. My husband just spoke earlier. My house is right next door. We, we, we anticipate working with the engineering here. Um, Scott to make sure to provide the you know take care of some of the water issues we we build homes all the time and we work with the town to make sure that we don't have water problems in anybody's basements and things of that nature so we were working with the engineering departments in all both the county town and, and to see what we can do to make it you know work, make it work okay Do you have another question or okay. Come on up. My name is Kevin Drew and I live at 1771 Qualtrough. The back, the back of our homes, there's only about a foot down in that basin. There's only about a foot of topsoil. Are they gonna dynamite to build a house back? Okay. The solid rock. It's solid rock down there. Um, we haven't we haven't done any t whole tests or anything like that at this time, so I, I can't answer that. Okay. Also, are they going to have to bring the the grade up? Are they going to have to uh, backfill it if they don't? Because right now, go ahead. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, are, are they going to have to bring backfill in? You know, I don't understand it because what, right now they can't even plant trees back there. Bocola came back there 
and they tried to uh, plant, they wanted to plant trees in the huge basin. And Bacola told the owners, you can't because there's only about a foot of topsoil. So my question is, again, you know, we have, it's rock in there. It is a swamp all year long. There's no question about it. Like, and um, you can hear it. I mean, it's just like it's the water's back there. And it's a catch basin. And uh, I don't know, I just, I'm just concerned about the dynamite. If they're going to have to blow up the, you know, the area, and it's going to upset the foundations. I'm concerned about uh, that. OK. okay. I, I have a couple answers just for everyone's concerns right now. Um, a lot of your, all of your comments are extremely welcomed and, and certainly valid uh, when it comes to site plan review. This application right now is only for subdivision approval to split the lots. To build a home on that new lot, they would have to go through a formal site plan review with the town staff, which would involve bringing on an engineer to study the drainage, to come up with a plan so that none of the water, storm water generated on the site affects the properties around it. It would have to come up with a plan to handle what's there, treat it, contain it, let it drain to where it needs to drain to get, whatever, to, get to whatever inlets are around there. If they have to install a new catch basin inlet, that has to be done. Regarding blasting, that's not permitted or allowed by the town for foundations of basements. We only allow blasting for utilities. So that would be something that their engineer would have to look at when designing the site plan for that future home. But right now, as, as the applicant has stated, they don't have that information because, again, right now they're only asking for approval to split the land. All that information would come at a later date when they submit an application for formal site plan review, and we would handle that upstairs in the engineering and planning department. At such time, we would notify the neighbors that a plan has been received and that you're welcome to come in and take a look at it. But all these comments that you've uh, given to us tonight, we will pass all those on to the town engineer so that when that time comes, the, a site plan comes in for a home, they have all those in their hands as they review the plans so that they're addressed at the time. But right now, we simply don't know those answers because the engineering work hasn't been done yet. So I just wanted to get that out there for everyone who still has concerns about that. It will be addressed. It's part of our job as the town of Penfield to look through that, just don't have them right now. Thank you, Zach. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Okay. Thank you very much for coming. We'll Thank you for your call time. this here and close. First or, or uh, I defer to the chairman. <laughs> let's do. Um, I defer to the deferred. Yeah, you know, let's do the subdivision. It's fresh in our minds. Yeah. Huh? I turn the page back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sure I'm not working on the whole matter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Meanwhile, Doug's open up 20 more files. Well, I don't care about that. <laughs> so he's we, better at it he's than I am. <laughs> Or that, that <laughs> subdivision without getting into real detail. Hang on a second. Yeah. Bob, hang on. Hey, guys. I'm sorry. We're picking up everything on the audio. Just take it outside. Thanks. Thanks. That is a viable, buildable lot. The question may be where the house is, but there's no problem subdividing it in terms of the subdivision yeah exactly the, it is a compliant subdivision mm -hmm. both lots meet code requirements for minimum lot size um, as I said during the public hearing all the comments were extremely valid to get a better history Absolutely. of what's out there um, and those are all things those existing conditions drainage improvements so on and so forth those would have to be looked at under a formal site plan application sure. which isn't part of this request so, <coughs> just excuse me. Uh, My guys are asking, do we stick around 
for you're welcome to to sit and watch and well, yeah, from the we'll audience. We'll discuss their project later. We will be discussing their. Okay, uh, sticking around. We'll be discussing it. Okay. Okay, continue. Where did we leave off? Oh, that was a question. Okay, I answered I'm, that. Um, <laughs> compliant. Yeah. I'm satisfied. Yes. Are there any other questions from the board or points of discussion? So. No, we have a, a draft approval resolution. Yes, the yeah. completed EAF as well as the resolution were provided um, in advance of this meeting for the, the template for everything. Um, if there are any other concerns from the board, you can open up to a, a vote on that for approval of the project for the subdivision and the lands. Yeah, I'll move to approve the EAF. I'll second it. Petsky? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. And I'll also move to approve the um, resolution. I'll second that. Petsky? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. Okay. All right. I'll set. Sketch plan. I'll set. Anybody ever heard the term, you get more bees with honey than you do with vinegar? Mm -hmm. I think I have. Flies. Flies. <laughs> Flies with honey vinegar. We need to screw that up, BJ. I like this better. <laughs> I like this better. These are nicer. Maybe that's I wonder why he's trying to attract bees. <laughs> you lost me there. Well, why would you attract flies? I don't know. Why would you try to attract bees? I don't know. So I don't know where the expression This is a came. great I back and forth. I just know the, the <laughs> subtext of what it means. Why the bees? Why the flies? Why the bees? Obviously, it fell flat. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to open up to you guys. Thoughts? So my first thought is, um, having just seen the responses to staff comments, it was a little premature. Um, you know, it's, it's, you get a difficult site and, you know, with, with some difficult issues and a, and a very, uh, you know, interested, uh, public in the immediate vicinity, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. you know, less than a day's time to review responses from the applicant is not sufficient for us to Well, yeah, I, I don't think that it's uh, fair for us to sit up there and be expected to read through a letter and have... Uh, or, or, or even down here, there's, there's a lot questions. of information here, and, and you know, my, my first thought was... That is a sketch plan. And the town planner um, made a comment with respect to the density. Um, we got a very elaborate response back, <clears throat> but um, what what Zach was sharing with me up on the dais was that his actual response to a decrease in, in the density is not contained in this response letter. Rather, it was in an email that was forwarded to Zach only, at which time he said, I disagree and I'll provide you with some further information. So, okay. <clears throat> If I could clarify what my, my comment was to in the PRC memo, um, what we see on the plan is the existing conditions of the site today when we look at the lots and the pads of the homes. The only proposed grading that's shown on the plan is for the driveway and leading to the cul-de-sac. The rest of the contours we see on there are existing today because they went out and shot the, to the, the topo and surveyed the property. My concern for lot four, and I think all staff will, sh will, will share my concerns, is that you have the presence of two existing drainage ways in there. Now, they're not identified as stream corridors or waterways, but as you can see from the topo and as they described, um, the elevation creates a natural drainage way through there and placing a home in that lot in, in that proposed lot on that existing slope um, I, I we had concerns for that um, about diverting water around the footprint of the building diverting water impacts of water to that home impacts to Increasing whatever the slope may be 
that would be required to create a usable lot there. Um, obviously you'd have to cut into that slope quite a bit to give someone a usable lot regardless of the size of the home. Um, and it is sketch plan still, I understand that, um, but this is the time to get those comments out there. So my concern initially was, um, or my suggestion was that this, that the proposal may be better suited for a three lot subdivision to avoid disturbances to some of the hillsides that exist there today. Uh, there are the presence of steep slope e-pods on the site. Um, our mapping is is a reference. It's not completely accurate because when, when Topo was shot initially and we created e-pods, a lot of that is interrupted by the tree cover. So when our e-pods were generated, some of that is slightly skewed because of the tree cover. Obviously the site is surrounded by slopes. It is a, it's a valley. Um, so, you know, our job as staff is to look at that and, and to make suggestions to try and protect some of the environmental features that are on the property today. Uh, that, that's where my comment came from, and Jim, to your point, there might be a, a better response to that comment from the applicant later on so, if, if you're looking for more. So, Mike, what do you think? You've been done. Yeah. And, and to the extent that there's scour on the backside of these lots up above, um, and, and any disturbance of the natural drainage patterns could increase scour up there. Uh, could it be argued that it would decrease, or it has a chance to decrease it as well? Or, and this is a, I'm speaking from someone who's not an here. expert in, in that field. They would have to. But a change could a change could improve or. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be right? it's going to be tough either way. Um, you know, you remove the root structure which holds the slopes together, but then you know maybe uh, there's just too many variables. I think right now to kind of determine what is going to happen if you know they did go to build <coughs> this. So. Yeah, it's hard to say right now. I'm thinking. There is the potential for more erosion. Obviously, the site is showing that currently along uh, Panorama Trail, but um, there is the potential for other areas to do that as well. So, I think Mike hit it right on the head. There, there's a lot of unknowns at this point. It is because it, it is sketch plan. Um, more things would obviously be provided during a formal site plan review. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, but, uh, but I mean, advancing a sketch plan. Oh, I agree. A three lot subdivision versus a four lot subdivision. That's Big an difference. entirely different animal. So, you know, I, I think to the extent that, you know, getting the additional information that the applicant's consultant uh, suggested they would provide to you in that email that you shared with us, um, along with giving us an opportunity to read their mm -hmm. responses to staff comments, would lend itself to tabling this. Oh, this for, time. yeah. Before we get a letter out? Yeah. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Terry, your thoughts? Yeah, I think you should be tabling. What about uh, the traffic? They, they've covered everything about the vis uh, site, the, the vi uh, distance, and stuff that's all been covered as far as traffic. Yeah, they provided um, stuff. Uh, I haven't been able to fully review right. what they provided. Right. Um, I, I remember as being acceptable as far as the code requires, you know, the state DOT requirements. So, <coughs> I think the concern for traffic was more um, during construction. Which is a big thing. Yeah, which, it's a that's going to be you know, a big thing. We can always make a condition for traffic control. That's a big yeah, yeah, right, thing. Right. 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 I, 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 mean, I fail to bad. see how uh, you know three or four single family dwellings is going to have any impact, impact on the yeah, yeah, traffic. traffic. Okay. No, that's a non really no. not a bad thing. Uh, providing the site distance is what we would look for there right. anyways. I, right. I, I agree there. And during construction is your short term um, but concern. Some of the key things to me are, all right, if you have a driveway that's coming up 
to Panorama Trail or Road, Private Drive. Does it come out to a landing? Yeah. So that you're they do have a flat, or you're sort of, you know, in a rocket ship trying to pull up and out. They do have it graded so that, you know, you go up like in the center of the driveway and then you come to a 3% landing towards the top. So that's something we would have designed as our own roads. Mm -hmm. So they this, are complying with that. This entire drive lane would have to be in place before you could put, you know, fully loaded concrete trucks in there for development of the houses. Right. Anywho. Okay. So, so one of the, on here we're starting to formulate just some the beginnings of high level comments, time. but sounds like the board would like a little more soap time on what was presented tonight, the responses to comments, any additional feedback that may come that that may come in for this uh, sketch plan. I'd like to make a motion that we and would table the sketch plan application pending appropriate time for staff and the board to review the responses to the PRC comments and to receive and review additional information that uh, the applicant's consultant may provide uh, with respect to their arguments for four lots versus three. Okay. Yeah. I'll second to that. Hetsky? Aye. Burton? Aye. Knauer? Aye. Tidings? Aye. Okay. So, just just to recap for you guys, tabling the matter until the work session meeting is uh, two weeks from now, May 26th. Um, give the board and staff time to review the responses to comments that came in earlier this week. Uh, come back at that meeting and then have a discussion to formulate the board's sketch letter um, to get back to you as a response to what's been presented. Okay. okay. 526 is what day and what time? Thursday, 6.30. Here. Yes, sir. And that's all we have for tonight. All right. No all further right. business. Uh, we will adjourn. See you all in two weeks. Thank you so much.